What's up guys, Woody here, back with another Mythgar video, and it's a, a video I haven't done yet, but I've one I've been meaning to do for a little while now, and now seems a really good time to do it. So I, um, this is a completely getting started guide. I've, do, I've done stuff similar to this in the past, in terms of I run a, or I host, or even I call it, I, I put out a new to Mythgar video, going through some of the intricate mechanics of the game, and, and breaking them down, and giving examples, and gameplay examples, and advice on how to learn those mechanics but this is a case of this video is very much going to be a case of you've literally downloaded the game you may have played one or two games and you're thinking what the hell do i do where do i go first what, what, what is Mythgard, basically and this is going to be going through everything we're going to be answering questions like how many hours do you need to put in the game to get a full collection i'm also going to be going through stuff like what what cards are, are, are like you want to craft not want to craft how the UI works, when you start the game, what order you want to play the different modes, how you can improve at the game without having to really seek through tons of YouTube content and videos, where to focus your early time on the game, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to try and keep it around 30 to 40 minutes in the video. But like I said, if, if you've played more than five hours of Mythgard, you don't need to play this. You don't need to see this video. <laughs> like you, You're going to be wasting your time, and I want to be completely honest with you. If you haven't, or if you're thinking about getting into the game, this should give you a pretty good idea and break down almost everything for the game. Now, the way we're going to kick it off is... Um, well, I should probably introduce myself, because if you are still around, and you're thinking, who on earth is this guy? Um, just call me Woody. Hence the channel name, What's Up Woody? Um, I play CCGs. Uh, I came from the Gwent community. I played Gwent. I moved across to Mythgard around about six months ago. Uh, and I play... I, don't, I wouldn't say I play as much Mythgard as some people. Like, some people put in tons of hours. I'm currently sat around 350 hours in the game. Um, but I definitely play it more than average. I stream it three times a week. I create content on it. I create a new to Mythgard series. I create deck, vi deck videos and all this stuff. So that's me. Now you know who I am. That's who's going to be taking you through this video. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go through each UI panel. Now you can see here there are seven panels on the bottom. We're going to go through each one, what they do, what you, what you want to get from each one of them. This is like I said, this is a complete stripped back, the very first help you kind of get your feet wet in the world of Mythgar. Because let me tell you now, this game is amazing. Absolutely amazing. One of the game's downfalls is new player experience isn't bad, but where the game is very, um, not complex, but has a, a lot going on, new player experience, especially people who are new to CCGs in general, can be the best way to describe it, a little bit overwhelming. So hopefully I can break down those, those walls between that few. But anyway, enough of that. So, home screen, this is what you're doing. Your, your home screen might be slightly different depending on what faction challenge you've got selected, but I'll talk about that in a minute as we go through. Now, quick run through the home screen. Up here, you've got your currencies, uh, everything like your time, how many packs you can open. Uh, this is essence. Essence is basically dust, what you use to, to create cards. Uh, you might go, well, you've got loads of essence. 2,400 essence is what you need for a mythic, like the top level card in the game. Uh, and that's all I need now are mythics. These are coins. Coins are used to buy packs. 1,200 coins gets you a pack. Uh, and this over here is mithril. Mithril is like premium currency you buy to buy packs. Um, it's 150 mithril for a uh, for a pack. Hence why I can't spend 120 mithril. The reason I have this is because a whole promo thing I've done when it was available. And that's why I have this little, weird little bit. But anyway, that's this the home screen, okay? And you have your, your UI panels down here, okay? Your menu panels down here. So the first one's profile. Profile hasn't got tons in there. You can click on this and you can change your profile picture if you really want to choose what picture you've got representing you. Uh, then you've got your stats down here. You can see how many um, favorite cards. You can see when you started playing the game. You can see... You, so coin cap is basically everyone starts with 50, you can have 50,000 coins in your bank. But for every one pound you've spent on the game, it's increased by, I want to say, a thousand. But I mean, you might go, well, how much have you spent on the game? I'm a, I'm a, a content creating partner. So I was given packs and I have a sneaky suspicion that given those packs has gone towards my coin cap because I've not spent that much on the game. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, but anyway, so that's there. Matt is um, something I'll get to more as we go through, but it's effectively um, respect. So if you well, if you say GG at the end, your opponent says GG at the end, you get Matt points. I've gone down there. Ladder wins, all that stuff there. Uh, this is your core collection um, of what you, ha you have, your common cards, your uncommon cards, your rare, your mythic. There's only one set in the game at the moment. So core, that is it. There's, there's no expansions, okay? Levels up here. Again, I'll go through levels more as we get further onto it. History, now here's an interesting one. History, this is going to be embarrassing. I doubt he'll be watching this still now because um, 
It's a beginner's video, but Semper, I've done some deck deck teching against Semper the other night, uh, who's the person I play a lot of my games against when I'm getting ready for tournaments. Yeah, we lost every single one. But what's nice about this here, and this is a really key point, probably the first big feature I want to highlight to new players, is the replay mode of Mythgard. So, you have everything up to your last 100 games is here. Oh, I lost Semper again. I don't always lose to Semper. Everything up to your last 100 games is here, which is 21 days ago, okay? So you can go back through, and let's say, for example, I might go down through here, and then I'm going, okay, Iron Chef, I remember this game. I should have won this game. How do I, like, what did I do wrong? I click on the little uh, yellow eyeball, and now this is going to take me to a replay of the game, and this is that game. I can now watch the game back, and I can see my plays. I can see where I, what I played well, where I, where I didn't play very well. I can fast forward, okay? I can slow down. I can pause, okay. I can I can move backwards, I can move forwards. Also, like this goes forward turns, okay. So it's 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 a really amazing feature that I feel like every card game should have into it because it basically allows you just to go through and go. Well, okay, I'm gonna watch about this play now. When not I use this the most is um, now I get that this isn't. Oh, I get this isn't going to be for everyone. But when I play in a tournament and I lose in a tournament, or even if I win in tournaments, I always go back and I watch all my games the next morning with a coffee. I often do it with Semper on a, on a, a joint street, like um, Discord call. I watch his games, he watches my games, and we give feedback. We go, well, that was a poor placement there, that was a good placement there. And it has helped me improve like the most out of anything in the game. Watching back your replays is honestly one of the best ways to improve at this game. And um, yeah, it's so easy. Come in here, you can click on someone's name if you want, and it will take you to their profile. Oh, no, it won't. There you go. So you right-click and you can go to um, your profile if you really want to do that as well. So that is profile. Decks are pretty standard. You click on here. These are your decks, okay? I don't have tons at the moment, um, but these are so these are decks you have made up. Your decks have records down here, okay? So it's 35 for 23, all bits, bobs, and bits. Now, the two yellow decks at the end are another great feature with Mythgard, and they, they are featured deck lists. Now, these rotate out twice a week. They rotate out on Mondays and on Fridays, it says down here. And these are created by the community. Now, the feature decks are capped at only three myth rules or mythic cards per deck and only five rares per deck. Now, they're basically made by the Erebur, who's a fellow TRS teammate. Um, I mean, Cool Cat, who's a really cool, uh, really cool content creator and player of Mythgard. Really nice guy. Um, they created these decks. Anyone can play them. But what I would be like, for example, not everyone has orange Zelots at the moment. Everyone has different feature decks. I think there's 30 feature decks at the moment and they kind of rotate around. Now the reason these are so good is when you first jump in after going through the, the, the beginning modes, you don't have a huge collection. You can literally select this now, I can I can I can click on it, I can jump in and I can play it and I can climb competitive rank with it. Now you might go, well that's broken. These will soon plateau out. For example, I am just outside Mithril League at the moment. I saw a lot of feature decks in bronze. Silver, you see a few. Gold are pretty much absent, which is a really nice way of seeing it. So the bronze leagues, the new players in the game, can play these decks. And they're a great way of, one, learning different archetypes. They're a great way of, two, playing with different cards you don't own. And three, just learning the game by playing cards you wouldn't normally play. Yes, everyone goes, oh, I'm a Rush player. If you only ever play Rush in a game like Mythgard, you're going to get caught out because it has so much going on with it that you need to understand some basic principles of what your opponent's colours are. So for example, you're playing Rush. If you only ever play Rush, you're not going to play something like Green. But understanding the basic principles of how Green plays and what cards they're going to probably be playing is very important. And you're going to get that by playing these feature decks. Honestly, one of the best features in the game. They're incredible, really good. But yeah, this is your deck deck list here. If you go onto a deck, it's classic stuff. You can create a deck in here if you want to. This I don't need to explain too much. You have, uh, if I switch my camera over quickly, there we go. Uh, you have your mana curve over here. When you first load up, it might look something like this. All, all you've got to do is go down here, there's a little orange arrow. You click this little orange arrow and you can see your mana curve just there. If you don't know what a mana curve is, it basically means that this told me I've got five one drop, what five one mana cost cards in the deck. I've got 12 two mana cost cards and I can see my curve here. This is a mid-range deck, so I kind of want it kind of to be big around the mid here. Like, well, I say big, I kind of want it even across all of it, really. The more reason I have more twos are because green has a lot of spells that I played at a two drop mana. But this isn't a deck building video, it's fine, okay? Um, but this is this is how it looks. You have your pathways, you have your powers, 
Um, and we'll go on to that in a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll do that when we go into the gameplay part of this video. But this is the deck building screen. You, you can you have all your, the options you'd expect. I can then, I can look at red cards. I can turn these off. I only look at red cards and come over here. If I go back to the other screen now, so make sure you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I can then choose to have wild cards on, off, prestige cards on, off, non-prestige cards on, off, like all this jazz. Okay, I can choose all this stuff if I want to, and then. That's the deck building screen, okay? So this is a deck thing here. You can copy, you can practice, and all, all that all that jazz. Now, collection is very similar to the deck screen, apart from you have your um you can you can in terms you can look at all cards, but you can also look at other stuff as well. So open packs. Now it's open packs, you can either click this to go open a pack, or you can just click on this little uh, tab up here, booster packs, and it will take you to open packs. Uh, we'll go to cards in a second. Portraits are uh, you unlock portraits doing different things. You can see the only ones I'm missing now are the leveling up ones. Um, oh no, so you get some. So you get these for level 31, level 33, level 34, level 35. There are a couple that you don't get for levels, uh, and you get others for just opening um, chests, which I'll go on to again in a minute. Uh, and um, winning some games, sometimes you get given um, a portrait as well. Paths and powers. Now, paths and powers are best seen as. Leader abilities is the best way to describe it for new players to the game. Effectively, your path is like your passive leader ability, leader skill, and your power is your active leader ability. So by that, what I mean is you can mix and match these. I often play turn of seasons. Okay, so turn of seasons is a path that is on the board. It's it's like a little um, tree on the left or right hand side, depending what side you're. Sorry, on your left side for you. Um, and it is basically, this is what it does. So it will give you one start in life. It will take through the four seasons. So every turn, a season lasts for two turns. And that's for, for one full turn, two turns, if that makes any sense. By meaning my turn one, opponent's turn one. Then it will change season for my turn two, opponent's turn two. Then it will change season for my turn three, opponent's turn three. That's the way that the seasons work. Now, this I have a video up about paths and powers. If you want to go and, and watch that, then by all means do so. But this effectively uses death. So you need to understand what this does. Pursuit is a basically, uh, you're playing second. You don't play first. What do you have for playing second? Because this game has summoning sickness. Playing first is an advantage, meaning you can potentially swing at your opponent's face before the opponent could swing at your face. And you're also slightly ahead on a mana curve in terms of you can play bigger minions before your opponent can play bigger minions. Um, so this is like the, like I said, the passive ability. These happen. You don't have to activate these. These just happen. Some have some activation um, like um, rules, should we say, for example, to activate this ability, you need to make sure you have three minions have been killed and gone to this souls to then get a card back. But it is still a passive ability, okay? You don't actually have to press anything to do it. It just naturally happens. Now, your powers are, like I said, your abilities. Now, we have, we'll have we go for something that's pretty bog standard here uh, with Smite. It's cost two mana, once per turn, deal two damage to your opponent if you have more life than, if they have more life than you, or just one damage. So this is just chip damage. You press on this, you're going to spend two mana, you're going to do damage to their face, and then that's simple as that. Another one, or the most common one I see, definitely the most common one played in my decks, uh, is Impel. Again, two mana, once per turn, give a minion a free move action. Basically meaning I can move it from one lane to another lane. So this is your active leader ability. It's the best way to describe it. Passive leader ability, active leader ability, okay? Or passive leader skill, active leader ability is the best way to describe what paths and powers are. Gallery is, hey ho, it's gallery. You unlock artwork by playing the game and you can go through and you can go, do you know what, I really like Zero. Let's go look at his artwork. Wow, that is really cool. So gallery is gallery. You, 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 I don't need to spend any time gallery. And quickly looking at cards. Um, cards is, as I said before, this is where your craft cards or your or your your dust cards and, and if you, like, you can auto make it at the top if you really want to. Um, but let's, let's click on this card here. You get all this information come up. You get a little bit of lore coming up around here okay you can skip through your, the, the cards like like so essence this would be how much this card costs to make 500 essence if i burn it or dust it it will cost me uh 100 it will get me back 100 essence uh if i want to create if i want to prestige it so basically i can use the uh premium currency to turn this into a prestige card which i'll show you in a minute um then that will be uh 600 um, if, which don't ever do that, please, guys. I'll explain again why. You know, don't ever prestige these cards. I'll explain that. Basically, if you do ever come into Mithril, for example, you, you buy Mithril to, to open packs and you go, oh, I'm going to keep some in case of something else. Please don't prestige cards with your Mithril. It's super expensive. You don't need to do it, okay? Prestige cards are... I don't actually own any because I always dust mine. 
being partner, I'm very fortunate that I uh, get my cards turned into prestige cards anyway when I'm playing the game. But this is a prestige card. It's a full art card. It's all it's all it is. Full card art. You can also get the you can turn the writing off on it if you want. So look at some like there you go. This is prestige there. If we go across to some of like this here, go across prestige card. There you go. It's, full, it's just full art. You don't need prestige cards. Six hundred is around about. I want to say four pounds to prestige one card. You don't need to do it. It's too much. And then wild cards down here. We'll get. Our, I'll talk about more about wild cards in a minute. But wild cards basically are cards you can spend to redeem cards back. So if I had a blue rare wild card, rare being the fact that it's um, gold here, then I could um, I could spend that to redeem singing stone back if i wanted to redeem singing stone back now also quickly while we're here let's talk about cards there are four rarities in myth guard okay we have four we have uh commons and th that's displayed by bronzes now what's really nice you might go well, why has this got four and why is um the yellow got two this means you could have four mythical sorry four common cards in your deck okay if we go across to a silver card down here you'll see this is an uncommon card we can have three of these cards in our deck if we go across to a rare card we can have two rare cards in our deck and you've probably guessed it by now but the first mythic card i can find come across here is one blue dot meaning we can have one mythic card in our deck now that isn't obviously I can have one mythic and no of mythics i can have one copy of kara i can't run four copies of kara if you're coming from magic the gathering you can't sit there and go, oh, I'm going to run four legendary creatures. It, it won't work. You run one legendary creature being Kara or it doesn't have to be a creature. It can be enchantment and all, all other things like that. Okay. Um, so that's that's the, how you deck build. That's how the game is balanced. And it actually works really well. It really does. It means these very expensive cards are in Mythics. Because Mythics are expensive. I'm, I, I, I fully say this now. I'm a partner. Rhino have done an amazing job supporting me as a content creator. I love this game. Mythics are expensive, and the big downside of Mythics are there are a lot, a lot of Mythics in the game. There are 99 Mythics in the game. There are only something ridiculous like 550, 600 cards in the game. So basically like 25%, nearly 20% of the, sorry, 20% of the, the card pool is Mythics, expensive cards. And I don't want to sit here and say Mythics are game-winning cards, because there are ways of playing around them, but majority of the time, they are game-winning cards. They're huge. They are massive. The way it's balanced by only having one in your deck means you, you may not ever find the mythic you, you want. There's one tutoring card in your deck. By What I mean by tutoring card, a card that allows you to look for a card in your deck and play it. So, mythics are great. They're huge. Being able to drop something like a, a Magnus to clear my opponent's board is really big. However, there are chances I'll never find Magnus in a game. And that's the way it's balanced. Whereas I'll probably, I'm almost guaranteed if I was running Karen Henge, I'll probably pull one or two of them in a game just because of the ratios. I can play four of them. I can only play one Mythic. Now, finally, we're gonna, well, before we move off this stage, there are three types of cards in, in uh, Mythgard. If you look down here, we have your minions, your, your creatures, whatever you want to call them, okay? These are your cards that come out, they have power on them, you have strength, and you have health. It's pretty simple. You haven't even had to play a card game to understand what strength represents and to understand what um health represents okay we then come across here and we have spells sorry i have actually have four types of card i got wrong spells are classic what you'd expect so they don't have a body to them they have no strength they have no health but they come out and they do fun things they do two damage to another to an enemy minion they buff your minions for two two and give you regen two meaning you keep getting life back uh your your minion gets life back okay we then have what are called enchantments and these are i don't want to say unique to myth guard but these are definitely feel, felt quite refreshing to Mythgard and they look great on the board these are effectively so Mythgard has seven lanes you, you've probably seen this already and you'll see this in a minute in the, in the game seven lanes these are Mythgard cards that you play down and they buff that lane now for example if you go to this simple one here Karen Henge any minion that's played on Karen Henge on the board on that lane is buffed by 1-1. One, one. Simple as that, okay? It's a very simple one. You have some more complex ones, okay? Like um, Nazca, um, Nazca Memorial, which is basically, Occupy Minion has plus one attack, no extra health, for every minion that has died in this enchantment. So you're deliberately trying to play minions with enchantments to get them killed, so you can maybe get some stuff coming out that ends up being huge, like, I don't know, 15 attack or something crazy like that, okay? You have more controlly ones that... 
here at the beginning of your turn, every turn it creates a 1-1 one, one temple stake. It's just a chump blocker that comes out. This can get very effective in the right decks. Okay, uh, you have really strong ones, like a bit more complex ones, but expensive. They're mythics. When a minion dies in this, it comes back to your hand, and then you get it gets 1-1, one, one, and it gets agile, so it can swing past other minions, and it's reduced by two. It's, you get, these are, these are really cool. Enchantments aren't like must be. You don't have to run enchantments in your deck for them to be strong or good. However, they really can help flesh a deck out, okay? And the last type of cards we have are um, artifacts. Artifacts are pretty standard in terms of artifacts with most, most card games or a form of artifacts in most card games. Um, and the way these work is they go to the side of the board just underneath your, or next to your, your profile picture and they have durability. So for example, if we look at the... Um, Droop near band, then or then this has 12 durability. Basically meaning if you take four damage to the face uh, or to you as a player, then you're gonna lose four off the durability. Now, enchantments stack for protection. So what I mean by that is if you um, play, so you've got uh, Droop in a band down, when you play Llama in front of it, if you took another four damage, Droop in a band wouldn't take any damage but the Alarm Ring would now take the full damage. If you played another in, uh, artifact in front of Alarm Ring, that artifact would protect Alarm Ring and Droop in a Band. If, hopefully that makes sense, okay? So these, these are how enchantments work. They do different things on the board. They're a little bit like spells, but they kind of stay on the board the whole time. For example, you've got bar, 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 Barbed Bolts. One mana. Give a minion minus one, minus one, and this artifact will lose its free durability, okay? So you, you, they're like spells, but you can keep doing them over and over and over and over again, okay? So that's that's artifacts, and that's all the cards in the game. So I'm, I realize this is going to be a longer video than I expected, but uh, then we're going to, we'll go back to play in a minute. Store, pretty standard. Hey, 1,200 there. There, you, you can you can spend stuff, okay? Uh, a quick little thing, if you are watching this video, and you're watching it in December, and you haven't done so yet, and you're a new player, go to... Re redeem code it's not going to work for me now and type in snow pack and that will get you free core packs and type in snow back and that will get you a uh, like a, a new card material back if you want to to, to show your to, to, to customize your deck so snow pack and snow back in capitals uh, I've already redeemed it so I can't do it again is um we'll get you some cut packs and get you a little card back thing there now, moving on to missions. Missions, missions, missions. So this is a screen I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on because I wanna really explain it. So the way you, this is how you earn your in-game currency. This is how you get your your um, your collection up, shall we say. So we start from, from, from left to right. Daily bonus pool is a really weird one. If we look it up, you can see how much text is over the top of it. It's like, what? So basically, every time you win a PvP game, you'll get 120 coins. You'll get uh, 50 coins for a loss, and you'll get 50, you get 50 coins for beating the AI, uh, but you'll get no coins for losing against the AI, okay? Now, that basically lasts up for a certain amount of coins. Once it's about 10 games, you're, you still get coins, but it drops down. That's basically what this is. Don't get too confused by this. People have been arguing about this for a while, and oh, it doesn't make sense, and things like that. All you gotta know is, for at least 10 games a day, you're going to get full profit on winning, being 120 for winning in PvP and 50 for winning in PvE. To play over 10 games, you're still going to get coins, but it's going to drop down a little bit, okay? That's what you need to know on that. Daily singles means if you win three games a day, you'll get three random single cards. If you get a common card, you don't get a play set of that common card. You get one card from that common. Now, these are... It's cool... For me, that I've never had a mythic drop on a daily um, single. I've had a few rares pop up, but I ha I've heard that mythics can pop on a daily single. So you can get really lucky and maybe you put a mythic on a daily single. But these are your like your daily challenges. Now they stack. You don't get three challenges a day. I've not been able to play for a couple of days, so hence why I have three challenges built up. Now, for example, I do this challenge. I go, I play six minions that cost five mana or more. And then I will get 700 coins. They'll make my total up to 1,202. I can go buy a pack. I finish this one here. Win two matches while burning green and orange cards. I'll get 800 coins. And if I do 100 damage to players, I get 500 coins. You can't have more than three dailies stacked. Okay. So what I would recommend 
is always make sure you have a free slot so you're not missing out on dailies, you're not missing out on in-game currency, you're not missing out on coins. Now, you can only re-roll once a day. So these little arrows down here, you can see you can re-roll once a day. You can go, oh, yeah, Inflictor, I'm going to click this, re-roll it. I don't want to do the 100 damage player, but you can't do any more. If you end up getting, but win a game by burning orange and green cards, then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I've got that one there. And you don't play those decks, then you might want to reroll that one tomorrow. And finally, we'll go on to the weekly chest. So weekly chest is a thing where you have to earn seals. So you earn seals by basically uh, winning games. Simple as that. If you beat a PvP game, you have a 25% chance of getting a seal. If you win against PvE, you have a 10% chance of earning a seal. If you do it a successful gauntlet run, then you uh, then you get a... So if you get an unbeaten gauntlet run, you're guaranteed a seal. Now that basically means that once your seal pops, you get five seals here, you can open your chest. Mine's ready to open, because it, if it's not ready to open, it will say unlocks in X amount of days. You have to wait seven days for it to unlock, okay? Now, once I get my seal, I can open this, and you earn anything between 2,200 coins is the minimum you can earn. The maximum you can earn is 14,000 coins. Now, don't get excited by that. I've never heard of anyone get that much money or that many coins. I've certainly never got that much coins. The most I've ever had from uh, my chest is 5,500 coins, which is good. Like, that's really good. That, that's four packs. Four packs out of nowhere. There you go, straight into the game. So that's what your weekly chest does. See these as like a little extra bonus. Don't see them as like you have to grind to try and open them. They normally get you... If, if you get two packs from a weekly chest every week or every 10 days, if it takes you slightly longer to unlock it, it's, it's bonus packs. It's, it's it's a nice way of just earning a little extra stuff there, okay? Now, across here, you'll see there's tabs on this one here. And these are all to based around kind of in-game currency or in-game rewards. Factions is something that was added in recently. Now, if you see, if I click this to go active, it will change the background on my screen. That's what I meant earlier. The only one I finished is green. It's because I am I love playing green. Now, what these do is these are a really good way of you not only earning coins, but also earning... Um, cards so for example this one here i'm on so what, let's go well let's go, let's go blue i'm on the first one of blue i've not done any other blue ones okay so what this means is once i do this challenge as in 25 of your northern minions die in combat that is northern is just blue blue minions just blue minions die in combat then i once 25 are done i'll earn six coins and i will earn a um a play set of uh rare no sort of place i'll earn uh, three common what you call it um uh, wild cards sorry there you go so on three common wild cards you can see they're silver rimmed so they're three common wild cards meaning that i can then go and claim back a full play set of a rare of a common card i can go i want to go play I, I need to get some more fanes i can go there i can get more fanes although i think fane is actually a common card but anyway you get the idea you get wild cards now this these things here have i think they have nine levels to them you see i'm on level two when it comes to um when it comes to red now they fluctuate they go between common and uncommon common and uncommon in terms of your wild cards once you get to about number six you get rares you get rares and then you'll get commons and then you'll get rares and then you get commons and then finally, on the last mission, mission number nine, you get a wild card for a mythic card of that color. Meaning, just by doing these, you can get yourself six wild, six mythics, one for each color faction, which is a lot. That is a lot. And these 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 challenges can be done in PvE, they can be done in PvP, they can be done in Gauntlet, they, they can be done anywhere. You just need to make sure you are following whatever the, the, the rule set is on, on, on the on the uh, the challenge. But they're great. They are great, great, great fat quests. They're definitely something I recommend you do early on. The reason I haven't been stressing to do them is I already have a big collection, so I don't need to worry about. Uh, there's no cards I'm really trying to get at the moment, and I'm kind of just doing them a little bit in the backgrounds and as and when I want to. Achievements, classic. You do these different achievements in the game. Hey, we're going to give you coins. Simple as that. Levels, simple. You level up. You get given these rewards. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Matt is, like I said earlier, so I'm almost got a Mythic Wild card off, off Matt, actually. Um, and Matt is GG. So basically, our GG. I'm level 15 on Matt. We've GG'd at X amount of time. This goes up pretty quick at first, but you can see it cycles. So you get four uh, common wild cards, and then you get three rare, um, uncommon wild cards. One rare wild card and then one blue mythic. You'll get to level four in the space of about three hours, three, four hours. Um, and then it cycles around more and more and more and more. And it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. 
all the way down to number 99. So it cycles around. If you've got the common cards and you don't want to spend on spend on anything, then you can just dust them. Dust them, take the essence, and go craft something you want. But getting them the mythics every four levels is definitely something that's really nice and really good. All you got to do is GG people at the end of the game. Simple as that. And finally, social. These are people, these are your friends who you follow. Um, for example, Semper, who I was playing against the other day. What's really nice is we've seen the replay mode. I can actually just go and click on this now and I can go and watch Semper's game. Can't see his hand because it's you can't see the hand. It's simple as that. It's uh, we, we, If he could see the hand, it means Semper could have a second screen up where he could see what was in the opponent's hand and that wouldn't work so but this is this is live this is as semper is playing the game right now i am watching semper play the game we can click up here we can go see who his opponent is. his opponent is a mithril four player i know semper was mithril one and he's been trying to climb he's still mithril one um so yeah this is his game these are the this is a good way to explain these are the paths so I, I was explaining at the beginning these are the powers two mana power here and our opponent is also or his opponent is also running impale these are the seven names this is an enchantment you can see. This is the Karen Henge one we looked at on the board. And this is another enchantment over here as well. So you can start seeing that they have the enchantment set up over there. That's where it's going. It's not looking very good for Semper. If we leave now, we never know if he won or lost. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's cool. Um, so that's the UI. Jeez, cool. That's been 30 minutes just going through UI. Hopefully, if you're new to the game, that has given you an understanding of, of how it all works. Okay. I need to quickly go and change this because we're going to go into a game in a second. Um, and the idea of the game being that I can explain gameplay mechanics to you as a new player as well so now play these are all the game modes in Mythgard uh, at the moment um, there are more coming but don't worry they're not coming like instantly or, or anytime really soon story is a story mode it takes about an hour and a half to finish uh, it's fun you earn a lot of cards by doing story so definitely go do story melee is 2v2 you have 14 lanes on the board it's nuts it's super fun it's really cool I play in a 2v2 league um with Senpar, love it, it's really good. Ranked is your classic constructed ranked. Uh, you, you play against other players, you get rank points. I'll go into more detail in a minute. Casual is you play against other, it's PvP, but it doesn't go against your rank points. Brawl is PvE, play against uh, play against computer. Gauntlet, PvE, is playing against computer. You draft, you kind of draft cards. You get given a certain amount of cards. If you play Gwent, it's arena mode. It, it's, it's just draft mode in any other card game. Uh, arena PvP is draft mode against other players. Puzzles are a series of puzzles you can do that you don't get huge rewards from, but they are you learn some really, really good mechanics from them. So if you're a new player, here's what you need to do. You've downloaded the game. Before we go into the game, okay? You've downloaded the game. You've doubled around it, and you're thinking, my God, Mythgard's nuts. There's so much going on. What the hell do I do? Here's what you do. Go straight into the story. Bang. Okay, the story is set up to teach you everything. Straight into the story, and you can play through all of these chapters here. It will start super simple. It even restricts you to what even you can play. It introduces you to paths, introduces you to powers, introduces you to everything. By playing story, you unlock so many cards. You get given rare cards. You get given mythic cards. You get given so many cards just for playing story. Finish story. It takes an hour and a half, maybe two hours if you get stuck on a couple of the uh, a couple of the quests, and that's done. Story part, story mode part two is coming in. I want to say it's coming in like March time. I may be wrong on that, but anyway, story part two is is coming another time. It's great, two hours at most, and you'll get cards. You'll learn the game. Perfect. Go do that. Uh, then you want to go and personally, I would recommend then you got your cards and all that. Go in and do some of the puzzles. Now, just do puzzles until you get stuck. Now, these ones here are super easy. That's super easy up until around about, I think it is, I think it's banding or needle point. It starts to heat up in the difficulty. But you get to the needle point and you're like, look, I've done this five, six times. Now. I, I, I can't do it. I don't know how to, don't panic. The reason I'm saying go do the puzzles is they teach you some really basic mechanics that, you're, that are quite unique to Mythgard. Some interactions that you need to the game. If you don't stress about getting stuck, just go, cool, I'm done. I'm going to step away from that now. You, it will get you some coins. It will get you some, some in-game resources to go and create cards. Done. Brilliant. That's all you need to do, okay? You've done some puzzles. I'd very recommend going to do, jumping onto Gauntlet. Now, this is all before you jump into Ranked. I know some people go, I, I only play Ranked. That's fine, but you will get taken to pieces if you, one, don't understand the game, and two, don't really have much of a collection to do anything with, okay? So you jump into Gauntlet. And the reason I said jump into Gauntlet is because when you first open up the game, when you first uh, open up Mythgod, you don't have access to all the paths and all the powers. 
By completing three gauntlet runs, you will unlock all of the pathways and all of the powers. Simple as that, because you'll get given them for every time you you do them. Now, mine now has up to nine, but when you start, you have, so your first one will have seven, then you unlock eight, then you unlock nine. So gauntlet one is seven, you'll, you go through that, you unlock eight, then you unlock nine. Takes around about an hour to an hour and a half to get through a full gauntlet free run, PVE. The reason I say PVE at first is you don't know the cards. It will also, playing Gauntlet will give you access to cards you don't have. It will let you learn interactions. It will give you a flavor of the different colors and what colors you want to go and play. Uh, and that's that's how you can kind of go, oh, I really like the idea of yellow. It's quite controlling. Maybe I'm going to sprinkle in some purple there because it's got good spot removal. Uh, and then I'm going to play those cards together in a control deck. Throw cards together. Then you can start going into your ranked, okay? Now, dabbling ranked, playing ranked by all you... All you all, all means okay remember use the feature decks because they are really really good also you don't have to do it straight away but i'd recommend doing it early into your game time is doing your faction quests okay if you're new to the game go i like i like yellow i'm going to do this and just build decks around whatever this 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 thing here is okay for example if i was playing orange now i would just spam anything that makes deserts in my deck just to play it and i just go and play against the computer and I could probably get this, this this stage done in two games, maybe three games. And all of a sudden, perfect, brilliant, cool, awesome, done. I've just got 600 coins. I've just got a set of cards. What's the next one? I, from what I've heard, it's around about, if you focus just on the challenges, it's around about four to five hours just to get the challenges done. But you'll get, for getting a whole series of challenges done, you'll get around about 3,000 coins, which is two, almost three packs. You'll get... Um, about 15 wild cards, uh, you'll get two rare wild cards, and you'll get a mythic wild card. So it's fully, fully worth doing. Okay, I'm not going to say you have to go do it, but if you want to get a collection, it's definitely worth doing. Then, obviously, you jump into ranked. And the way ranked works is, you can see here, we have rank G10 RP 5.2. That basically means we are in gold 10 league. Every league, so bronze has bronze 10, bronze 1, bronze 10 silver has bronze 1 to bronze 10 sorry silver has bronze 1 to silver 1 to silver 10 gold has gold 1 to gold 10 mithril has gold m1 to m10 and then champion is just champion champions are like the top top pro league if you want to call it okay um and then you you get to have 100 rank points to go to the next league if i go to ladders here you can see up here these guys here okay slayer is Currently on 26.7 rank points. A win roughly is about 30 rank points. We're taking up to 56. If uh, Arcanity wins their next game, they will go over the 100, point, 100 rank point threshold, meaning they will go into Mithril. Uh, so the extra 16 rough rank points they would get but couldn't be spent on gold would go into Mithril. They'll be M1 with uh, RP or rank points of like 16.2 or something like that. Um, hopefully that understands, explains how rank works for you. And finally, let's, uh, oh, last thing is, if you want to go on, I can go on here now, I can click on this, and I can go watch games in action. Games, like, happening right now. All these games are happening live. I can go on there, and I can see who's playing what. Maybe I'll go, oh, there's a Mithril player playing a Gold player. I'm just going to have some dinner, but I'm going to watch some games to learn the game, get better at the game. You can go do that right now. All these games are live. It's a really good feature in the game. Anyway. <sighs> wow. I'm sorry that that took 38 minutes, but... Hopefully, you learn a lot about actual Mythic Now, what we're going to do is going to jump into a game. Uh, I'm playing on Ranked. I'm playing with my competitive deck. And hopefully, I can talk you through the very, very basics of the game on Ranked. So, let's rock and roll. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. Uh, I did, I'm, this game isn't about how well I play. It's going to be about talking through the real basics of Mythic for you guys. Okay. So, that's the fluck. That's a low flux. So these are the paths. They're playing Journey of Souls. We are playing Turn of Seasons. Down here we can see we are on Winter. Up here we can see they have two souls in their graveyard. We can click up here. We can go to View Profile if we want. And we can see this is a gold-free player. And we can see the little profile status set up there if you want. Now, one thing you can do in your hand if you want to is you can move cards around to put them in different order in, in, the, in your hand. We need to burn cards. So the way Myth Guard works here is I need to burn a card. If I burn a green card, I get a green gem. I'm going to burn this green card here to get a green gem. 
and get one mana. That card isn't gone from the game. It's gone back into my deck, which I can pull later on. I'm going to play this card down over here in this lane. I won't talk about lane placements too much because I don't want to overwhelm people. And I'm going to press end turn, okay? So that's how I create mana in this game. I burn cards to generate the gems and the mana to play. Now you'll see, for example, like Volkov Heavy has two green gems, meaning that I need to have two green gems and the five mana to be able to play this card. If I had five mana but only one green gem, I couldn't play Volkov Heavy. So it makes sense now to start making a orange gem. This is a very expensive card with three orange gems. I can't play this anytime soon, so I'm going to burn this card now. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my Gallows Boy, because you see it's two, but it only needs one green gem. And I'm going to play it over here. This card's ability, I'm going to move over, and I'm going to swing and do one damage to the face. And that is going to be the end of my turn. I can't do anything else, and I'm going to end turn. I'm going to move these around to make so sure they're in order. That's just what I like to do. Okay, so like I said, we're only focusing here on the very basics. I'm not, don't, I'm not going to confuse you about why I'm choosing to do certain things. But So they're playing blue green meaning they're going to have some spells of aoe they're probably playing the uh the bald mountain package okay so we're going to move this over i think we're actually going to trade the trade you know okay we can't play anything right now so we're not going to we're going to move this over here we're going to swing the face swing the face again now so then i'm not 19 life we're on 22 life we can't play a card because we don't have anything to play. So we're going to just burn this one here because I have two of them. You see, I have two Raider Tombs. Burn this now, meaning I have three mana. I have two green gems and one orange. So I want to play this card next turn. So I need to burn an orange card next turn to get my next gem to be able to do that. Okay. Now, once I've burnt a card, it basically means it goes back in my deck. It will come back. It will come back black around the edges, meaning that I can still play the card. However... I can't, I can't burn it again. You can't burn those cards again. Okay. So these guys getting some pretty big now. Okay. So we're gonna burn this card here because it, it, we don't need it yet. It's an expensive card we don't need. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we are going to play Perry at the gates. Just. Here. So this is going to give us card draw as well. We'll take the Lamp of Wonders. Um, we're going to move this over. And swing at that. We do another two damage to the face. Now, you see here we haven't got flame around our bar. It means we've already burnt a card. But now we have six mana. I won't explain why we have six mana. There's a certain card ability we used to manage to get us extra mana. But basically, we have six mana. So next turn, having six mana doesn't mean I have six gems. That's what important to know. So if you ever have ways of buffing cards up to get more gems, you'll notice that you don't actually have... I don't actually have the six gems. So I can play this card because I have the thing here. But if I had something that required three green gems... I couldn't because although I had the mana for it, I don't necessarily have the um, the gems for it, okay? So you see, this is what I mean here. So you can see these cards here are, are slightly brighter. This card here is slightly darker around the edges. It means it's been burned. If I tried to burn this now, it would say this card has already been burned. I can't burn this card anymore. It hasn't got a blue glow around the edge either. So that means that card's a card I burned earlier to get the, the mana gem for it. It went back in my deck. It's now come back to me. I can't I can't play it again, okay? Uh, so what we are going to do is we're going to burn this card. We're going to play this card just here. We're going to move this card over because they're starting to get a bit more power on the other attack now. We have more cards than them. And they're going to get this fame card back, but it doesn't matter. They're on four mana. We're on seven mana. Um, they haven't got a big hand left. They can. What I feel like they probably will do is they'll probably use this card here to put this back in my hand and swing through to get the six, nine damage plus the life tap, which might put us in a bit of, a bit of trouble. We might end up losing this game. Um, not being the issue we had here, and again, I won't get too technical, is we didn't have a card to play turn three. And the card, the deck we're playing against, there we go, is quite an aggressive deck in terms of damage it can do. So, 
we're effectively in trouble because we had nothing to play. We need something big now. So here we go. We are in big trouble now because we just don't have the big minions to play. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to burn this because we don't need any more card draw. Uh, we're going to Seal of Exile this. And all we can do is detain this. And I feel like we... Probably to port this to slow it down as much as we can. And we end turn. So they have the one life tap over there. That's game. There you go, they win. Um, there was a risk I had to take, but they won. Like I said, I'm not too fussed about the, the, the result of the game. We had no, we didn't have the, the turn three play, which really meant that we were like against the deck that had, they had all the cards they need to on the, like on the point they wanted to, to play in and we didn't, but that's, that's a bit more of a technical video for, for another time. Um, but this here is the, the flashing fun is the map, the GG. So I click this, it will say, oh, I've got to go through all my, my stuff here first. I click this now, it will say, Good game on my behalf. They said it earlier as well. We both get the mat rewards from that. And now game has ended. I can either requeue back in for another match or I can just go to main menu, which I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to main menu now. So like I said, win lose, it didn't it doesn't matter. I am not fussed about the result there. I'm more um more so about the about you guys understanding the basics of the game, the burning mana and the playing cards and the gem cost just there. But that is gonna wrap this video up, guys. Now I, I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, I've seen lots of videos around about the basics of gameplay, which I think is great, but so many people ask me, what do I do when I first open up Mythgard? This video has hopefully helped you out a little bit. So just to give you an idea again, if you download the game, play the story, jump into puzzles and play through the puzzles until you get stuck. Don't get, don't get stressed on the puzzles, just play until you get stuck. Then go play some PvE Gauntlet. It's going to get you your paths and your powers. It's going to get you cards. It's going to get you in-game currency. It's going to get you seals, all that jazz. Then jump across and start doing some faction challenges in your PvE. Maybe play some, some um, featured decks on Ranked. Maybe start building some decks if you have the cards to build decks and go from there. In the description below is going to be a link to um, the Paths and Powers uh, new to Mythgard video. So if you want to go look at what's saying else now about Paths and Powers and how they work and really breaking down which ones are good for different decks, you can do There's also going to be a link to a video I made, which is um, another video about budget like five competitive budget decks these decks are like super cheap you'll be able to craft them within about a week of playing the game maybe shorter um but they are and they can be competitive they can carry you easily to gold gold gold, gold league if you play them well so yeah that's um that's the videos linked in the description below if you want to see more of me you can check me out over on twitch.tv slash what's up woody again link to that is in the description below uh, but also i have a discord as well guys where we chat lots of myth guys and we chat just general gaming nonsense but we also chat Mythgard stuff. The Mythgard community in the Discord is really cool. If you're new to the game, you want to just chat to other people, you want to maybe find some friendly games, you want a deck tech for any tournaments coming up, then make sure you go and join or check out the Discord again, link in the description below, and you can um, jump over there, jump in the Mythgard chat and, uh, and and chat away about the great game of Mythgard, guys. If you are new to the game, let me know in the comments below how you're finding it. Any other questions, I will respond to any comment if you guys need some help. It's a great game to get into. It's very overwhelming at first. But stick with it and slowly you'll start realizing just how rewarding this game can be in terms of you utilizing player skill. But anyway, thank you very much for stopping by, guys. Have a great day, morning, evening, whatever it is, where you guys are. And until next time, goodbye.